All right. Welcome to the Kitchen Sink University, where we share our knowledge with you, the viewers, hopefully to teach you something new and empower all of us to expand our abilities and strive to be more capable. We hope that you'll take what we show you, improve it, and share with others. So, okay, recently, while making a short film, I dropped one of my video cameras and broke the screen. And I kind of looked around and saw that replacement screens were like 140 bucks minimum. But I did find a parts camera on eBay that, that had a good screen. So uh, I guess I'll show you how to replace a screen in a Sony HDR SR1. You can see here, the screen is totally cracked and the touch function doesn't work either. And keep in mind here, I've never taken this camera apart before, so we'll be learning together. With any electronics repair, you, you always want to start by removing the power source, which in this case is a battery. So I'm going to take a look at my donor camera and try to see how it comes apart. And you can see it has a nice, good looking screen there. I mean, it, at least I hope it's good. In looking at the screen hinge area, I can see three tiny screws that appear to be holding it on. So get out your screwdrivers and start taking them off. Uh, one thing I do when taking things apart is to try to arrange the parts and screws the way they were arranged in whatever it was I'm taking apart. That way I can easily keep track of how to reassemble it. Okay, so now I'm going to try to get these plastic covers off. It's pretty clear at this point there's going to be more stuff to take off of there to detach the hinge or get it, things I need to get at. And, you know, I can't really see a clear way to open the screen housing either. So I'm going to have to dig a little deeper here. Now with these small plastic pieces, always be careful and don't put too much pressure on them or pry them too hard. I'm not really worried in this case is this is the donor camera. So I can afford to be a little bit more rough with it. And after I got the covers off, you can see two screws at the hinge side of the screen's cover. And I think that's how it's going to come apart. So somehow I need to get at those. Um, I guess probably have to fully detach the hinge. There are four screws that hold the hinge on and one happens to be slightly shorter than the others. So keep track of where they all go. Okay. Now that the hinge is loose, I might be able to access those other screws. And I'm noticing there's one of those little film ribbon cables here with very, very little slack. Those things can get cut or damaged pretty easily. So just take your time and work slowly. That's kind of a challenge for me today because I'm all jittery from too much coffee. We'll see how it goes. Uh, found that with a little angling, you can get those two screws out. And then the little fingernail prodding screen cover comes off. And inside, you can see two separate ribbon cables running to the board. Uh, one I presume is the display signal and the other is probably the touch screen. The wider one is held in by a little tab that you have to pry up before the cables released. And that's kind of a pain to do. The other cables just held in with friction. So with a bit of effort, it'll slide out. And there you go. One replacement screen. So now it's time to swap the screen on my broken camera. Once I have the screen removed, uh, it'll just be a matter of reversing the steps to, that I use to remove it. Really here, the hardest part is wrangling those damn ribbon cables. They can be super fidgety to install. I started with the small one first and just you know make sure they're in the same orientation as when they came out. And be real careful about alignment too. And then, uh, so I put in a larger cable after that. It's important to lift that little tiny tab first. Uh, it has a tendency to want to go in an angle, so just take your time. Once the cables are in, it's just a matter of putting the cover on, screwing in the two screws for the screen, and then the four screws that hold the hinge down, followed by the hinge cover and its screws. And I realized after I took the, the other one off, the center cover didn't need to come off, so it's not removed here. And once it's all together and everything looks right, go ahead and put the battery in, power it on, and presto, 
one working camera. So I, I hope this has been informative. The, the process will probably apply to many different camera makes and models, depending, uh, though it's probably going to vary slightly between them. Um, remember, try, don't be afraid to fail, learn and teach. Class dismissed. <laughs>